cheerful piety by john berridge letter one to the reverend mr b dear friend with a melancholy pleasure and at the same time self-abasement i hear your lectures on man's heart has fallen by original apostasy and the dreadful epidemical disease of sin which has spread itself over the whole soul isaiah one five and six when you dissected and anatomized the heart of man as before and after conversion you went into the private closet of my heart and the underground vaults where you have dug up some of the bones of the old man that have long laid rotting there here is the general exchange for corruption mark seven twenty one here the world and the devil often meet together here they correspond trade and traffic and satan well knows this is the best place for vending his contraband goods having so many friends that court the heart and recommend his wares viz vain thoughts worldly imaginations evil and impure sensations earthly affections inordinate desires ambitious views high-mindedness riches and sinful pleasures or pharisaical righteousness moral confidence unscriptural hopes formal sanctity uncovenanted mercy etc etc satan takes a turn round these walks and pays his compliments if i may so say to the inmates of my soul who are his good friends every day ay every hour he tries always to find out the constitutional sin or what the apostle calls my most easily besetting sin hebrews twelve one he has baits for all sorts of corruptions and he endeavours to time his assaults sometimes he bids good morrow to one lust or corruption sometimes to another and so makes his cruel visits from one place of the soul to another all day long and never bids good night for even when i go to bed he lays down with me and sometimes in my sleep he haunts and awakes me if i go into my closet in order to lock myself up from the busy world this impertinent intruder the devil will break in there too without asking me leave and so in the family and even in the sanctuary the house of god i am dogged by this roaring lion one peter five eight romans seven twenty one sometimes he snatches the preached word from me in a way of forgetfulness sometimes presents other objects to my view and sometimes would have me make an ill use of it by misapplying it sometimes i pray as if i was praying to a wooden god without a proper sense of his divinity and omniscience and so only word it with god by the way i would not charge the devil with more than is his just due for i know my own corrupt heart sometimes invites satan to come in and has often entertained and bid him welcome oh how i ought to be humbled that i have so often fetched a chair for satan the tempter to sit down in while he has entertained himself upon the lusts and affections of my soul and has he not had the insolence sometimes to tempt me to sin from the aboundings of grace o oh, horrid injection and sometimes such cogitations have worked upon the imagination and the heart in and under ordinances what power satan's temptations have had and how often the seeds of sin have sprang up and blossomed and budded and brought forth fruit to my sorrow as well as shame i cannot express but i would open the matter with soul abasement to the eye of him who looks down into my heart and sees all the workings of iniquity within me respecting what you are now upon it is pleasing to find experience answers experience as face to face in a glass proverbs twenty seven nineteen there is a prodigious alliance formed by the empire of hell the god of this world and by unbelief with all its train of sins in the heart of every natural man and the unrenewed part in every true believer this is the threefold cord that is not easily broken this is the grand alliance sir thus the case stands and on these accounts my soul has often bled afraid of myself afraid of the devil afraid of every one and sometimes afraid even of my god job twenty three fifteen and sixteen i have sometimes had hopes that grace had enthroned itself in my heart and i have had as it were a cessation from corruption 
at least in some branches the war has seemed to be at an end almost and i have often sung a funeral song of victory over as i thought a dead corruption but satan has called up all his forces and fired again and with his fireballs has set the whole city of my soul into a flame and there has been a resurrection of the monster sin again oh pity me all you combatants in the field of battle that know the force of temptation and are haunted as i am with these ghosts continually the devil sometimes gets me down and buffets me with the sin that most easily besets me and then turns accuser and brings railing accusations against me and if he cannot keep me from a throne of grace he makes me go limping and halting there afraid to open my mouth and sometimes i can only hold up my hand at the bar and cry guilty guilty and now sir let me ask you is this balm in gilead for an old stinking sore as well as for a constant running one a sore that i thought had been healed long ago but breaks out again and again with its bloody issue is there a physician what for such a nauseous defiled stinking as well as weak and sin-sick soul as mine i truly need a physician within as well as without christ and his blood and righteousness to justify and acquit and the blessed spirit to sanctify and cure the inward diseases of my soul for what would it avail a condemned malefactor to be pardoned and acquitted of his crimes if he had the jail distemper upon him and was to die by it indeed god never justifies but he sanctifies election is god's mark to know his own children by calling and sanctification are our marks by which we come to know that we ourselves are his elected children oh then set forth the work of the spirit in a rebellious will a blind understanding a hard heart a stupid conscience and vile affections renewing and sanctifying all these powers and so proving it to be truly the work of god and not of man this gospel sanctification i need and earnestly desire and if you would help me in the present prospect of the eye of christ scanning the hidden parts of man it would be doing a good piece of service not only to me but perhaps to many others who may be in the same case dear sir may you be helped to lay open the inward powers of the soul and the deceitful arts of the body for the alarming and rousing the stupid and careless and for the search and inquiry of every real christian both with regard to the principle growth and activity of grace or the decays and witherings of it what interest god has in the heart and how much sin and satan have what advances heavenward or what loitering backslidings or falls there are found too often in the way of glory i am dear friend yours etc letter two to the reverend mr b dear friend I perceive by some hints in a late discourse the rough draught of the portrait of my soul has reached your hands the lines perhaps were strong in many parts but yet imperfect this i call its fellow but alas were i to write whole volumes upon the subject they would still be but small sketches to anatomize my own soul and point out the irregular turnings and windings of a deceitful heart is beyond my skill satan is always beating and hunting the powers of my soul watching what will start next with a pride sensuality covetousness worldly pleasures etc and whatever sins they are he will be sure to strike in and follow how often has the soul gone hand in hand with satan in chase for pleasures till it has been even tired and then what fruit has it produced but sorrow and shame but sir in order to my deciphering the combined forces of sin hell and the world against me you have justly opposed the threefold grand alliance that is for every believer viz father son and spirit true the query still remains can such a one as you be in alliance with the king of heaven or bear the image and stamp of the lord jesus where is the consistency i want to know the worst of myself I own a spark of real grace shall be kept alive yet the wind of temptation blow ever so high and strong or the waves of temptation beat ever so hard true grace shall be victorious this is a matter of comfort to find a smoking ember under a load of ashes 
there may be indeed two men in one person the old and the new man flesh and spirit romans seven fifteen twenty one twenty two twenty three so upon a medal there may be on one side the image of the devil rebellion slavery last and tyranny and on the other side the effigy of a good prince loyal subjects peace and plenty and the enemy's hearts trampled upon as conquered this i think a lively representation of the case and it would be a happy turn could i make it out so to my own soul i want to see the divine image carved more legibly on my heart i am sure i see the picture of the devil strong enough there I do not so much fear the allied army of the prince of the world and the world itself under the command of its captain-general the devil as i fear the rebellion in my own bowels the restless monster sin within me civil wars are the most shocking and the most fatal besides my soul is the seat of wars and conflicts and you know sir what havoc is made usually in such places I know all the powers of the enemies, let the devil call them invincible if he will, cannot harm me, were it not for inbred foes. It is the corruptions within me, not the contagion of commerce without me, which I fear, or the bloody armies around me. It is that unruly rebellious regiment of banditti within my heart, my lusts, appetites, and passions that I fear will destroy me. It is I that infect myself, and therefore it is my daily prayer, lord deliver me from myself this is always a part of my litany and sometimes the first voice of my retired ejaculations indeed sir this is an unnatural rebellion to be in arms and in conjunction with one's own inveterate foes who are aiming at my heart's blood what fight against myself yes so it is flesh against spirit the unrenewed against the renewed sin against grace indeed i have proclaimed war in the name of the king of heaven against the states general of hell so far as it is in league with satan and against the potentate of sin but to tell you the times how often i have been foiled and beat or raised the siege or been wounded or have a limb shot off or been trepanned or taken prisoner i know not but i can never sign a truce and i am determined through grace if i die to die sword in hand I must own I have sent out a hue and cry many times after the traitors, and have sometimes hoped I had secured some of them. I have had them in prison and in fetters perhaps for weeks and months together, and they have been brought out to several courts of judicature, particularly the court of conscience, but that is partial. There have been bribes at times and not sufficient chastisement, but at other times there have been very severe rebukes and conscience has condemned the vassals to run the gauntlet with horror doubt and despair the charges of the court of conscience have been read aloud terrible peals have been rung and the chains of hell have rattled on the ear though sometimes conscience has given the verdict on the side of grace at other times there has been an arrest of judgment and a citation before the lord chief justice of the king's bench of heaven and though the wretch deserves no hearing as being outlawed yet to the honour of the grace and mercy of the sovereign the criminal is brought to the bar and though there is no room to say anything but guilty yet every plea that can be made in his favour is heard how they were drawn in by some of the clans of hell perhaps forced as it were against the settled judgment of the soul and perhaps through weakness and infirmity could not get out of the way or from ignorance of the crime or from extenuation of the guilt or from being hurried away into the service of the invader without so much as giving time for a cool thought and sometimes the poor soul has been like a galley slave wishing for deliverance from the bondage of corruption and crying out of the load and fetters of sin and saying with him of old bring my soul out of prison that i may praise thy name psalm 142 7 the high court of judicature hears particularly the relenting groan and the attorney general of heaven has compassion enough to put in a petitionary plea for the guilty wretch whose hand is still upon the bar but the dead warrant is come down from heaven for the execution of sin and all the heads of the clans of hell mortify therefore your members which are on the earth 
fornication, etc. Colossians 3.5 So if an eye or hand offend thee, cut it off. A reprieve at last has been issued out for the soul, and the repenting rebel has gone again in pursuit of those invaders of the peace and court of grace, and the soul has laid hold of some of them, and cried out afresh for justice and revenge against these traitors in his own breast, and has laid the sacrificing knife to the throat of these brats of hell. But how often have they raised up their seemingly dying heads, when on the very block, and asked for pity, and during the very execution have done much mischief, and made me bleed and groan afresh. I hope at times they are crucifying, but crucifixion is a lingering death, and I find they have still life, which, with the help of Satan, their grand ally, they too often discover and break out again, and all I can do is to cry out, Murder, murder, to the Lord Jesus. I may truly call them murderers, for they often destroy my peace and comfort. I long to see them dead, dead, dead. I desire your prayers for the poor wounded, but your affectionate, humble servant, etc. Letter 3 to the Reverend Mr. B. Dear Sir, after having been so free already as to disclose to you the secrets of my heart, you will not think it strange if I subjoin a third letter. There is one point more which deserves animadverting upon, and that is speculative sins, which I believe are too often overlooked by many professors, or at least very superficially regarded. If it does not amount to an outward act, it is too often passed over with silence, but truly I think there may be a committing adultery in the heart, Matthew 5.28. So the statute law of heaven runs, it is out of the heart proceeds all evil, Mark 7.21. The seeds of it are sown there, and it takes root and grows, blossoms, buds, and brings forth fruit in the soul, and no eye but omniscience sees it. How often have speculative evils been acted in the heart? The heart has been both the adulterer and adulteress. Sin has been begotten, nursed, and bred up, and acted its part upon the theatre of the heart. How often have sinful objects been represented to the fancy by speculation? Do I speak the experience of others, or only my own? The heart can bring forth, dress up, and act the part of anything, and there has been not only an interview, but an intercourse and sinful familiarity. There has been many a mortal blow given by revenge in the heart. This is a speculative murder, and there has been coveting a neighbor's estate, etc., and what is this but speculative robbery? So spiritual pride shows itself in many branches. When I have been enlarged in prayer, how has pride and the devil clapped me on the back and said, Well done, you have been very great today. How abominable is this to attribute an enlarged frame in any respect to self? How often have I been pleased with flowery words and fluency in prayer more than spirituality? Again, how often have worldly objects and creature comforts been set up in the heart, and have not the affections too frequently bowed down to them? Or, when a near relation or a beloved prattling child it may be, have been called away by the superior owner, how often has the heart whispered, and the tongue been ready to blab out, You have taken away my gods, and what have I more? What is this but speculative idolatry? How have pride and covetousness worked themselves up, sometimes into a coach and six, I into a palace? Really, sir, I am ashamed of these inward masquerades. The heart will turn into any shape. Well may it be said to be deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. This is still a black picture, but in a distant prospect. I sometimes hope at the closing hour, when I shall exchange worlds, Jesus will help me to lay hold of every sinful serpent that has long twisted round my soul, and keeps me company all my pilgrimage, and enable me by the hand of faith to hold them up. Behold, the heads of traitors which shall never come to life again. Oh, what a joyful shout shall I give when I shall feel these vermin drop off. At times I am ready to hope the gloomy territories of the grave are almost ready for me, 
that I may lay down this body of sin upon the block for everlasting execution. Oh, when shall these clogs and fetters be knocked off? And the dark and gloomy walks of this vale of tears turned into bright and peaceful realms. Dear sir, have these been black letters for your aspiring soul to read, though I do not question, but you have found something of these combats yourself, and therefore can pity and sympathize with a poor, weak, wounded, shall I call myself brother soldier. You have your enemies, I doubt not, and can trample upon them. I congratulate you on your victory, though not yet a complete conquest, through the captain of your salvation. I would fain bear a part in shouting salvation and honor, glory and power to the conquering Saviour. Revelation 5.13 he rode triumphantly to glory after he had obtained a complete conquest over sin, death, and hell, and dragged the monsters at his chariot wheels. He then gave Satan such a blow that he has not recovered since, nor ever will. From hence I fetch all my hope. If ever I am saved, it will be, I am well assured, by mere grace and almighty all-conquering power. Ephesians 2.8. Alas! What has such a depraved, polluted, and corrupt miscreant as I to reckon upon why mercy and grace should be exerted in my salvation but free, rich, sovereign grace? This will be the topic of the eternal songs of redeemed souls. And what, sir, if such a poor, weak, weather-beaten, tossed, tempted, and almost shipwrecked vessel as I should at last land safely on the shore of everlasting rest, and what, sir, if such a poor, weak, weather-beaten, tossed, tempted, and almost shipwrecked vessel as I should at last land safely on the shore of everlasting rest? Sure, you would strike up a new song to see me harbour in the heavenly port, if you are there before me. And what if such a poor, weak stripling as I should come off a conqueror, and more than so, over an armada of enemies, from sin, death, and hell, and what if you should meet me in the peaceful realms above with my robes washed in the blood of the Lamb and a palm of victory in my hand? Perhaps you may know me by my scars, but even every one of these will be a set-off to the freeness, sovereignty, and unchangeableness of the love of God. The worth and efficacy of the dear Redeemer's merits and the power and prevalency of the Almighty and ever-blessed Spirit. The burden of my song will be grace, grace, if ever I reach the heights of Zion. I bless the Lord since the first essay I wrote to you. I have found some new recruits from the inexhaustible magazine. The brave general has got the field and is keeping off the enemy, and I trust has given a renewed blow to all the Confederate troops that are in league against me. And I firmly believe that I shall be an overcomer through the blood of the Lamb as I have experienced some special advantage from the study of the old man and all his cursed artillery, with the powers of the infernal kingdom and this world, with all its bewitching sweets, I would earnestly recommend soul study, devil study, and the snares of the world study to every Christian friend. Commune with your own heart daily. Psalm 4.14. Beware of Satan's devices, and be ever on the watch, lest you enter into temptation, for though the spirit may be willing, the flesh is weak. Matthew 26.41 But it may be, dear sir, while I have been giving you some of the living sorrows of my heart, I have ripped it open in order to examine the entrails of the soul with more freedom than you have met with before. But either have I a worse heart than any other, or there are many counterparts in the experience of others. Indeed, I sometimes think I am by myself, and if ever I get to heaven, I shall be truly a wonder there. Psalm 71, seven, I shall be as an eternal monument set up to the honour of divine grace, and the inscription upon me will be this, a black hellish brand plucked out of the burning, now made, through rich mercy, a pillar to stand forever in the temple of God. Wishing you the prosperous gales of the divine spirit, and all success in your sacred work, I am, dear sir, sincerely and repeatedly, yours, etc. Letter 4. A consolatory letter to a Christian friend under sore trouble. Dear Madam, 
i have been lately much hurried or according to your desire i should have wrote before but however agreeable to my promise i have endeavoured to send you a few lines which i shall be thankful and rejoice if they are blessed of god to your support and comfort under your present troubles i desire to be sensible of my own unworthiness and unfitness for anything of myself that is spiritually good much more for so hard and difficult a task as the administering effectual consolation to a soul that groans under inward afflictions and outward troubles that is tossed upon the waves of satan's temptations and worldly disappointments indeed this is the work of none other than the divine spirit it is he alone that can command a calm into a tempestuous soul and speak peace rest and satisfaction in the greatest multitude of perplexities however i desire most tenderly to sympathize with you remembering that i also am in the body subject to the same adversities and trials and would help you all i can to bear your burden with faith patience and resignation i grant then that your circumstances are very intricate and exercising but let me beg of you not to construe your afflictions as the token of god's displeasure or a sign of your not belonging to him that is an old temptation of satan's with which he often assaults the afflicted christian but take the shield of faith that you may quench the fiery darts of satan alas crosses and afflictions are the common lot of the people of god in this world our lord has told us we shall meet with tribulation every saint has his own particular difficulty temptation and conflict to grapple with we have need to be emptied from vessel to vessel we are too apt to settle on our lees too apt to be taken with the vanities of this passing world if we are without afflictions whereof all are partakers then we are bastards and not sons how many have questioned the truth of their state and relation to god for want of these exercises and trials where are the cause and matter of your fears and despondency go search the records of sacred scripture and see how it fared with saints in all ages what job david and paul yea our blessed lord himself endured and passed through in this world should that be an argument against your interest in god which is the common portion of all believers here we are now chastened that hereafter we may not be condemned our happy afflictions that wean us from this wretched dying world are a means to mortify our corruptions teach us to live more constantly by faith on jesus christ and to fix all our hopes and expectations on another and better world and for that end you should be earnest in your wrestling with god in prayer that your trials may be all sanctified unto you that however at present they are not joyous but grievous yet hereafter they may yield you the peaceable fruits of righteousness according to god's gracious promise hebrews twelve eleven sanctified afflictions are a thousand times rather to be chosen than unsanctified prosperity these may consist with yea are often the effects of god's special love he sees we want them and he knows that they will work for our good do then lord what thou pleasest with me so i may but die to this world overcome my corruptions live more upon christ bring more glory to his name and have more comfortable tastes and pledges of his love and be often saying the will of the lord be done he is infinitely wise and knows what is best for me he is infinitely gracious and will be tender of the weakest of his children he is infinitely sovereign and may do what he pleases with his own the heaviest afflictions on this side hell are less far less than mine iniquities have deserved o boundless grace the chastening rod of a reconciled father might have been the flaming sword of an avenging judge i might now have been weeping and wailing with devils and damned spirits in hell i will bear the indignation of the lord because i have sinned against him it is of his mercy alone that i am not consumed and o oh, my soul it is but a little while and there will be an eternal end of all thy sorrows fears trials and disappointments yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry that heavenly bridegroom who has by his spirits betrothed thee to himself will ere long invite thee into his eternal kingdom where thou wilt forget the storms and tempests 
clouds and darkness in thy passage through this wilderness world, and all shall be joy and peace, love and praise. No doubts and fears shall ever assault thee in that happy state, but thou shalt dwell eternally under the immediate shinings of divine love, and shalt sing with the strongest believers, yea, the highest and most glorious archangel in heaven, the wondrous mystery of redeeming grace, and the comforts and blessedness of that state of rest will be more brightened, illustrated, and endeared by all thy tears and sighings here below. The remembrance of the gall and wormwood of afflictions will tend to sweeten the taste of heavenly enjoyments. I pray that God may be with you, support and comfort you with the divine consolations of his Holy Spirit, and establish you in his own due time. He is a faithful God, Deuteronomy 7, 9, a God-keeping covenant, and therefore will not lay upon you more than he will enable you to bear, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. If you have less of this world, may you have more of his comfortable presence, O blessed exchange, and if he seems to be hiding his reconciled countenance and suffering Satan to buffet you, may you be supported with his everlasting arms and have him to sustain and uphold you in every time of need. Should you want his comfortable presence, if it be ever thus with you, remember it was so with your once dying but now exalted Redeemer, Mark 15.34, and is the servant greater than his Lord? Shall we not joyfully tread in his steps, that we may at last be where he is? Hebrews 10.34. Can or ought we to repine if God deals with us as he did with his own well-beloved Son? The Lord help thee willingly to submit to him, and doubt not, but at the appointed time, when he sees it will be for your good, and his own glory, your heavenly Father will find you out a way to escape. He is never at a loss to bring about his gracious designs. When once his set time is come, and you should rejoice to think that he is carrying on the great work of your eternal salvation, amidst all your troubles and disappointments, and under all your outward and difficult pressures. Oh, say then with Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Job 13.15 Though I am weak in grace, yet I will adore him for the smallest hope. Though I am surrounded with terrors, I will bless him that I am out of hell. He that has begun a good work in my soul will see it perfected. Lord, I desire to submit unto thy will. Do what thou wilt with me, so that I may but bring honour to thy name and promote my own everlasting welfare. Oh, that you may find more of this faith and patience, hope and resignation, growing and increasing in you every day, and when once you are brought to this humble submission and resigned temper, to this hoping, believing, wanting, and contented frame, you may be assured deliverance is at hand, even at the very door. Luke 14.11 And now, oh, that you may be embraced in the arms of everlasting love, and enjoy the comforts of your pardoned state. The Lord increase your faith. Luke 17.5 Take from your burdens, or add to your strength. And let me beg of you once more, dear sister, not to suffer the disappointments and crosses of this world, however sore and trying in themselves, to drive from your mind the frequent and joyful forethought of what free, rich, and distinguishing grace has designed for you in a bright and better world, and is fitting and preparing you for every day you live. Let not the hardships of your journey make you forget, but rather long for your home. Oh, think on that heaven which neither sin nor death nor hell shall ever be able to deprive you of, in which you and I, through sovereign grace I trust, shall spend the endless ages of a blessed eternity. I remain, dear madam, your affectionate, etc. Letter 5. To the Countess of H. Madam, Thursday last I received a bill conveyed by Mr. Romain, but presented by your ladyship, which is immediately converted into cloth for the use of lay preachers, and for their donations. I send you my hearty thanks, the Lord has promised to return it with a hundredfold into your bosom, and I believe you can trust him. I wish you had sent along with it a few minutes of your life of faith, you might then have taught me whilst you were clothing others. For indeed I am one of those strange folks, 
who set up for journeymen without knowing their business, and offer many precious wares to sale without understanding their full value. I have got a master too, a most extraordinary person whom I am supposed to be well acquainted with, because he employs me as a riding peddler to serve near forty shops in the country, besides my own parish, yet I know much less of my master than I do of his wares. Often is my tongue describing him as the fairest of men, whilst my heart is painting him as the witch of Endor, and many big words I have spoken of his credit, yea, I am often beseeching others to trust him with their all, whilst my own heart has been afraid to trust him with a groat. Neither, madam, is this all. Such a profound ignoramus I am, that I know nothing of myself as I ought to know, I have often mistaken rank pride for deep humility and workings of self-love for the love of Jesus. When my master first hired me into his service, he kept a brave table and was wondrous free of his liquor, scarce a meal passed without roast meat and claret. Then my heart said I love Jesus and was ready to boast of it too, but at length he ordered his table to be spread with meat from above and water out of the rock. 1 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 this my saucy stomach could not brook, my heart thought it pernicious fare, and my tongue said it was light food. Now my love for Jesus disappeared, and yet I followed him only for the loaves and fishes, and, like a true worldling, I loved his larder much better than his person. Presently my master detected me in a very dirty trick, which discovered the huge pride and amazing impudence in my heart. Hitherto I had been a stranger to the livery my master gives his servants, only I knew he had many rarities, such as pearls and diamonds, and plenty to dispose of. Revelation 3.18 Accordingly I had begged a bracelet of him, a necklace, earrings, a nose-bob, and other pretty things which he readily parted with, being of a most exceeding generous nature, and... Will it not amaze you to hear I had the vanity to fix these odd ornaments about my old face, intending to make a birthday suit to appear in at court? Well, to be sure, while I was thus busy about mending my old rags and putting on my pearls, etc., in comes my master and gives me a sudden grip, which went to the very heart of me and said in an angry voice, Varlet, follow me. I arose and followed him trembling whilst he led me to the house of correction. Proverbs 3.12 where he first set my feet in the stocks and stripped me of my ornaments. He then took his afflictive rod and laid upon me very stoutly till I cried for mercy, but he declared he would not lay aside the rod till he had scourged every rag from my back. Isaiah 1.25 And indeed he was as good as his word. Think then how amazed and confounded I must be to stand naked before him, and especially when I saw myself a leper with an Ethiopian skin, Isaiah 1, 6, which my rags had hitherto concealed from my sight. I kept upon my legs, though overwhelmed with my shame, till at length, being almost choked with the dust and stench that came out of my rags in the beating, I fell down at my master's feet. Immediately the rod dropped from his hand, his countenance softened, and with a small, still voice he bid me look up. I did, and then I got the first sight of his robe, the garment of salvation. Isaiah 61.10 Truly, madam, it was a lovely sight, a charming robe, reaching from the shoulders down to the feet, well adapted for covering and defence, yea, excellent for beauty and glory. Exodus 28.2-40 there, prodigal Jack, he said, put this on thy back, and then thou mayest shame even an angel. It was wrought by mine own hand, and dyed with my own blood. Wear it, and then embrace me. I thanked him, and bowed. But, madam, I must tell you, though I do not desire you to be a confidant, when my master opened his robe, he gave me a hasty glance of his person, it was divinely sweet and glorious, and withal so exceedingly humane, that I fell in love. And now, would you think it of me, an old fool as I am, and swarthy as a negro? Song of Solomon 1, 5, and 6. Nothing would content me but a wedding. Jeremiah three fourteen. Nay, I have often proposed the match to my master, who sometimes replies, When you can leave all others, I will take you. 
the other day having asked him when he would take me to his bosom he answered when i could humbly lie at his feet and then he has also graciously promised to set open his cellar and larder and to keep them open for me isaiah thirty three sixteen matthew five six philippians four thirteen i am now removed out of the book of proverbs which i have long studied into the book of canticles but am god no further than the first chapter verse the second let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth i seem to want nothing now but a closer union with the dear redeemer the world at times strives to divert my attention from the chief object of my affections but my soul is ever panting after him yea my heart and flesh cry out for the living god psalm forty two one and two come lord jesus come quickly the lord strengthen your union and communion with the prince of peace amen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org